Hey, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the December meeting of the Conradina chapter of the Florida Native Plant Society. Great to have you here. I'm Carol Hebert, the current president of the Conradina chapter. And on behalf of, on behalf of all of the Conradina off, uh, officers and board members, we do hope that everybody is staying healthy and safe. And of course, we're not having our public meetings in the Melbourne Library, and we're not sure when we'd be allowed to. Um, it's going to be a while till we get notified. Uh, so we will be continuing to do our uh, meetings online uh, right here and live. So um, we'd love for you to also check out our website, which is conradina.fnpschapters. Dot org and chapters is plural. So um, you can check that out and go there. Um, you can check out uh, past newsletters. Uh, there's all kinds of information as to where you can buy native plants. Uh, and of course, our upcoming speakers and our current speakers and even past speakers. So uh, feel free to check our website. Florida Native Plant Society promotes the preservation, conservation, and restoration of the native plants and native plant communities of Florida. So as always, I'd love to introduce my officers and board members. Um, they've been hidden for a couple of months, but you know, they pulled off the garden tour and we're talking on these events and buying mulch and going to Ballard Park. And so it's really a lot of fun uh, to have them on board. So I always like to mention them in every meeting. Of course, myself, uh, Carol Hebert is the president, uh, Joe Sarmiento, uh, vice president, Jane Higgins is our treasurer, Catherine Mary is our secretary. Our board members, Suzanne Valencia, our Martha Stewart, of course, Sharon Dolan, Bo Platt, Jim Baldwin, Karen Moser, Dave Zeiss, Carl Weinbarger, Linda Gerasi, sorry, Linda, I almost always mess that up. Linda Gerasi, Leonard McRae Jr., Stuart Weimer, Sarah Morrison, and Cami Donaldson. Great team of volunteers, and I thank you all for helping out. Um, we're moving into our next year, and so I just want to make sure that you're aware we do have a wonderful speaker. And that will be in Monday on Monday, January 11th, 2021, also starting at 6 p.m. Uh, and her name is Robin Polensky, and her <coughs> business is called Sirlanta, excuse me, Sirlantera, Sirlantera Landscape Architecture. Um, Robin has designed and overseen the installation of functional uh, lagoon-friendly landscapes for different pr properties, commercial properties, owners, and homeowners who live close to or adjacent to the Indian River Lagoon. And so that will be our January speaker. So we hope to see you then. And as I said, please always check our website, the conradina.fnpschapters.org. Great. Okay. Um, tonight, we have a wonderful one, and we're going to also be talking about the Indian River Goon and how you can landscape. It's Nicole Perna. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Great. We've had uh, Nicole on before. Um, she does wear a couple of hats, so to speak. Um, she is the Eels Program Assistant Land Management Specialist at the Barrier Island Sanctuary in Melbourne Beach. And she was highlighted and spoke to us in the October meeting when we, just before we did all of the uh, native plant landscapes and Barrier Island has a beautiful one. It's developing and phase three is coming. So we're really <laughs> excited about that. Uh, she also owns a native plant garden business called Go Native Landscaping. And so tonight we get the interesting background, how the business got started and a great look at her own yard. Thanks for coming tonight, Nicole. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to get to 
talk to everyone. I wish I could be in person and see everybody, but this is as good as it gets for the moment, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, this is gonna just kind of cover my own landscaping journey that I've had at my home um, over the years, and then kind of how we got started into having our own business, and um, and just a few examples of the different types of projects that we've done over the past few years. Um, so it's been a journey, and so I know everybody is in a different stage, and there's still more that I want to do to our yard, so it's kind of always progressing and changing. Um, but you know, now is as good a time as any to, to get started since we're not, you know, doing all of the same things that we're used to doing. So we might have a little bit of free time, um, to be able to start putting, you know, some of those things into place and, uh, and making your yard dreams come true. Um, so this is going to be, we're going to start out with just my yard journey. So, um, this is, it is an image of my front yard. Um, it's not the most recent image, but this is kind of what we use for our business card. So we, it's showing some of our um, beautiful flowers that we have out front, horsemint and yellow top. But the next couple pictures aren't going to look so pretty <laughs> because uh, it's going to sh show you where we started. So this is my home in Melbourne Beach. So we're about a block up from the ocean and we get a lot of strong that north wind and Crazy. And East Wind. Yeah. And so this is um, it's a very tiny house on a very um, substantial lot. So the lot is almost a third of an acre and the house is um, fairly small. So we have, you know, an average size front yard, but a very deep backyard. It's It was over, um, you know, 90 feet from the back of the house to our fence. And so we were definitely a little overwhelmed with the purchase. The house luckily was in great shape. It's a 1950s house, terrazzo floors and all that. So we knew that we could spend some time and some effort in the landscaping, especially since it was so bad. Um, and so we just had a lot of dead and dying St. Augustine grass. Um, it was a short sale, so no one had lived in the house for um, probably a year. Nothing had been watered. And so everything was kind of looking really terrible. So this is an image just of the front yard. We had a dying queen palm that we took out um, and just a little landscape hedge just right out front. And then this is just an image of the um, side yard where our air conditioner is. There was no fence, so you could kind of see straight through to the neighbors um, to the east and um, to the south. And so that was my husband's first project, more than the landscaping he cared about. Blocking that in, getting a little bit of privacy, so the next images show the backyard. Um, and so that was a fence that we had installed and um, in the middle of the summer, it was very hot, <laughs> very hard. Uh, I thought he was gonna die out there, but he did it, it was amazing. Um, and so you can see just a huge vast area of green, half green, half brown grass. Um, and we had a single lemon tree that you can kind of see off in the distance in the very corner of the yard. And that was the only tree that anybody had ever planted in 50 years. I don't know why. <laughs> so this was um, in 2001. Uh, I'm sorry, 2011 is when we purchased the home. So we've been in the home for almost 10 years now. Um, and so one of the first things we did was just to plant the fence line, not the, not even the entire fence line. We planted about maybe half of the fence line. So our east line and our south line is what you're looking at. And so we got some gumbo limbo branches because you can take pieces of gumbo limbo trees um, and basically stick them in the ground and they will start to grow. And it's a, it's a fast growing um, canopy species that we have um, native to this um, part of Brevard County. So I had access to some branches and we stuck those in the ground. We also planted um, a couple of sea grapes and a couple of fiddlewoods because we really wanted shade. We're, um, I'm in the field all the time and the last thing I need to do is come home and sit in the sun in my backyard. So we really wanted to create some shade and we knew that was gonna take time. It wasn't gonna happen in a year or two years. Um, but it, you know, after about five years, we started getting some shade. So that was, uh, that was good news. And especially with these fast growing species, you can, you can see them grow in a bit quicker than if you were to plant something slower like an oak or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is just our backyard to begin with. Um, we also just out here, uh, we planted some sunshine mimosa as well, and not a lot, just a handful of them. And um, they help to spread and kind of fill in and out compete with a lot of the St. Augustine grass over time. 
Um, so in the front yard, we did a little bit more and we focused there. Um, you know, that's kind of all we did in the backyard for a while. We just planted this few plants. We planted some mimosa and out front, um, we wanted to do more. So I basically um, just took a Google image, an aerial image of um, the property. And I just kind of drew, hand drew, what I thought I wanted it to look like um, as far as creating the landscape beds and what I think would work um, within those beds. I wanted to try to mimic, you know, our coastal hammocks that we have here beachside because I wanted, um, you know, to represent, you know, what would have historically been here um, and what would also do well because it's such a hard, harsh, dry, windy, salty environment. I don't want to put stuff in that was going to just um, get blasted and, and fade and, and, and not do very well. Um, so I decided to create two islands um, where I could plant some bigger trees. And then we created um, kind of a wavy um, bed that wrapped around the front of the house. And um, we were gonna, we mainly planted shrubs and grasses and smaller things in there. And I just used a garden hose and I laid out what I wanted the bed to look like. Um, and I spray painted it. So if you look really close, you can kind of see the orange spray paint marks um, that are in the grass. And my husband, big and strong and, and, and tough as he is, rented a sod cutter for the day and um, cut um, all of the grass out. And we rolled it away. You can kind of see a little bit of the grass to the side. Um, and so, yeah, this was day one, basically, for, for, uh, for us doing the yard. And we had some banana trees that were up front there, too. You can kind of still see them at the end, but eventually those came out as well. And those um, little date palms came out as well, too. Okay, so this was probably a few weeks later. We um, got a bunch of different grasses and natives from Maple Street Native, um, and they were all about one gallon size. Um, so we had a lot of you know different Spartina baker eye, muley grass. Um, we had some inkberry, which grows right in the dune. We have had some base cedar, which grows right in the dune. Um, saw palmetto. You can see in the center of the islands in the second picture, um, those are some also some bigger branches of gumbo limbo that we were able to get. And we planted in the center of those islands. Um, and we planted some um, saw palmetto on either side of it as well, because you often in the hammocks see the gumbo limbos and saw palmetto underneath. Um, and we also planted some stoppers and beautyberry and um, some smaller shrubs in that front bed. Um, our water runs right through the center of the house, so we didn't want to plant anything too big in the middle, um, so we wouldn't have issues with roots over time. Um, and we actually went to um, the quarry to get the coquina rocks that you can see that we used for the edging. So edging a lot of times is good to have, it helps hold the mulch in so it's not spilling out into your grass, it helps keep a defined edge so that, um, you know, if you have somebody coming to cut your grass, they stay out of your beds. So they're not weed whacking everything down, which I know can happen a lot of times. Um, and St. Augustine, too, when it's happy, it wants to kind of grow and invade. So it kind of gives you a nice little barrier. Um, so we went to um, Rock Solid Rock, which is up in the north part of the county, and you can actually go there. It's a working mind, so you just have to be careful <laughs> um, while you're there because there's trucks moving all over the place, but you can handpick the rocks, and it's really inexpensive. Um, and so that's what we did. We, we took um, a husband's truck up there, and we handpicked all of the rocks. I think it was during a thunder, a, like a lightning storm. It was kind of crazy, but we made it out in one piece, and we brought them back to line um, the beds. And we did originally use landscape cloth, which is not something that I typically do um, anymore. But we wanted to um, use crushed shell instead or, or um, crushed coquina instead of mulch in the beds. We didn't want it to get all mixed up. So uh, we didn't use a plastic cloth, but it was it was a cloth material to kind of keep that separated. So this is broken down, you know, fairly well over time. But it, there's still remnants of it in there that I'm not super happy about. <laughs> um, so this is a picture just of after so you know we just I just wanted it to kind of look bleachy and it and it did um and so we used the you know the crushed coquina in the bed but it did make it really um weedy so I don't know how many people have it, had experience with the crushed um coquina but basically almost any kind of weed seed that falls in there it's like a soil so it starts to grow um and so I was definitely battling weeds 
for a long time <laughs> um, trying to keep this weed free. So the grass is filled out and we, I probably planted more than I needed to. Um, the centers were okay, but I planted a little bit, I would say too close to the edge of the bed because they were gonna expand out further. So over time I wound up just digging up some of these extra plants and just planting them in, in other parts of the yard. Um, so that's just something to think about too. Um, when you're planning something, you wanna really think about how big it's gonna get over time, not how, you know, the size of it when you're installing it. So, um, so there's not as many grasses out front as depicted right now, but we use them other places. Um, so we had some spiderwort and inkberry and um, base cedar. Um, we planted some beautyberry right near the front windows um, and some fiddlewoods, some stoppers. And I couldn't really plant anything that was going to do well in shade because there was no shade um, in this area yet. It was full sun. Um, and so this changed over time. So as my yard changed and um, developed and matured, I was able to plant some additional species in here once, once the conditions were right. So this is, um, I would say about six years later um, is that first picture. And you can see um, the gumbo limbos have gotten much, much taller and much broader and wider. They filled out really nicely and they're kind of being shaped by the, uh, the all the wind that we get in the front yard. Um, the inkberry has gone crazy and it's great. It's a super um, tough ground cover. It's really pretty white flowers. Um, the palmettos are filling out, or beautyberry um, near the, uh, the front door right there has really filled in and it's a beautiful pop of purple every time I walk in the house. Um, and then the picture on the right hand side, we have, um, we typically have uh, blue curls and yellow top and horsemen blooming uh, there. And so it'll, you know, fade back a little bit more in the winter time or I'll trim it back and then it'll, pop back out again and just be a great attractor for wildlife. So whenever I'm walking past here all the time or if I'm looking at my front door, I have a glass front door, so I'm able to see through into this area and it's just always alive and buzzing and um, it's great. So, you know, it didn't take 10 years. It took, you know, about five to seven years for it to, to, to fill in um, as much as these pictures are showing, but, um, but yeah, everything is doing well and 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 thriving. Um, so you know, definitely we've had some hurricanes which caused um, you know minor damage to things, but everything held up pretty well, luckily. So I'm just gonna go back for one second. So the area of the grass around um, the beds that you're seeing. So we planted sunshine mimosa in there, and we had a you know a mix of other things that kind of other wildflowers that were in the grass that recruited in. We we keep it for a, you know kind of like a meadow for part of the year, and then we would mow it back down. But it was still kind of a lot of mowing and weed whacking and and um, maintenance for my husband. And between that and the gigantic backyard. Um, he was over it. And so we decided with all of the time that we had um, this fall to just take out all the grass out of the front yard and not have to worry about it anymore. Um, and so we did. So we created a path kind of from the front door. I don't, I, I'm sure you guys probably can't see my, my mouse on my computer, um, but we cre created a path kind of through this little curved um, bed you're seeing here, almost where the horseman is, but just a little bit further to the side. Um, and we created a bed uh, or a path through there and then expanded all of the other beds around it. Um, and so this is me kind of laying out that path and what I wanted it to look like. And we just recycled those coquina rocks. So we took them away from the islands that were circles um, and in other parts of the yard. And we just laid out a curvy path, which we used um, some wash shell to be the base for. And that's my daughter. She's standing on the giant mound of wash shell. So she's a, a wonderful helper um, with all of our landscaping projects. And she comes out with me from time to time on my consults, depending on um, when they are and what's going on. So you may see you may see her if I ever come out to your house. She's great. And she's our new little she's our little native plant expert, too. So she's knows all about the natives and all the native wildlife that comes to visit our yard. Um, so we did this project uh, where we, we kind of got rid of all the grass in the front this fall. Um, and so this is what it looks like now. So we, you can see the horsemen and the um, spiderwort blooming, our beautyberry on the right-hand side. Our gumbo limbos are nice and um, 
flushed out. We lost a little bit of them and then some of the wind that we've had more recently, but um, things are really filling in. And we went ahead and planted more plants, <laughs> of course, um, into the new beds. And so I was able to plant some cassia, which I've wanted to put in, um, some dwarf fakahatchee, which, you know, it was, um, it was a little bit too hot and dry for that previously. Um, some wild coffee and some Stokes asters. So things that, you know, want not full sun and more shade, we're able to incorporate in the front yard. Um, so we're really happy about that. So this gives us a nice little cut through this path um, so we can get to the beach. And so we, we take this a lot. Um, and there's also a little path that goes to um, our gate. And we have a side gate on the, uh, on the east side of the house that I'll show you some more pictures of in a minute. Um, and then we were also able to use um, the front area that was all grass as an additional place to park. Um, we don't have a garage. And so we were looking for more space to be able to park our vehicles. And um, we have a little camper too. So we're, we're running out of room, <laughs> just the three of us, but we're running out of room. So uh, we wanted to kind of just maximize our space out front for everything that we needed um, to accomplish. And so this is another um, view from the street. So you can see there's some verbena that are blooming, which do so well um, in the sun and salty air. They just spread and fall out. Um, there's some coastal love grass in there too that we planted. Um, the acacias are just in the background on the other side of our lagoon friendly lawn sign. Um, and there's June sunflower beyond there, which is um, just spreading all over. Um, and Above that is just um, a cherry palm or a buccaneer palm. So I love all of the native palms that we have um, in Florida. So I've been trying to incorporate them in as much as I can. So this is a beautiful salt and drought tolerant palm. They grow slow and they're a little bit harder to get, but they are really cool. The colors are really cool. They're like a silvery gray and it's a single trunk palm. Um, so if you don't have a lot of, you know, a ton of space, um, you know, there's a few other types of palms that you can use um, and still, you know, you know, where the saw palmetto are going to want to spread and, and, and take over a larger area. Um, also pictured here is just our Simpson stopper. And so that Simpson stopper <laughs> is covered in uh, tons of fruit, but it is, you know, it's about eight years old <laughs> and it's just <laughs> it's still very small so this the wind really kind of sculpts things and keeps things from um from growing too quickly um and and the lack of irrigation as well but um and then next to that is a necklace pod too which you know a lot of times i see them and they're growing much taller but this one is still kind of shaped almost like a dome shape and i haven't trimmed it at all and it just is constantly covered in yellow um, flowers and that's another really tough great kind of um, plant to use um, in full sun a lot of wind it holds up really well the leaves of it are really really um, durable and and tough so this is basically what our front looks like right now um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the backyard um, because that is still you know under construction. <laughs> uh, we do have some wild coffee too growing um, underneath the shade of this gumbo limbo too. So it's, it's, it's spreading and it's so pretty. It's one of my favorites in the yard. Um, and that's just another angle from the front. So this is just some of the ink berry, which um, not a lot of people might be familiar with, but it's really tough coastal. So if you, you know, you live on the ocean or on the river, um, they're really great, um, tough, low growing, um, Plant that you can utilize. And those are my muleys. They've already seeded purple, so this was yesterday. Um, but they're still, they're so great and beautiful. You can see my Christmas balls <laughs> hanging from the tree. We just did that the other day. Yeah, so this is just our path from the other side and from the corner. We did add um, several kunti in the corner, which have been devoured by caterpillars. So some of them are a little bit fuller, but some of them are definitely um, been eaten, which is good. I'm, I'm very happy to contribute to the Atala butterfly and their um, development and uh, their expanding their population in our area. Um, I also have a little silver palm, which is which is also rare and uh, and is a really slow growing but beautiful palm so that's kind of what's out front in that corner um and then i also have a florida thatch palm um, on the back side of there so this is our backyard um, so since that original picture 
um, things have filled in. The trees have filled in quite a bit. And so, you know, they were planted about eight, eight or nine years ago. So our that seed grape is a good probably 20 to 25 feet tall. Um, and our gumbo limbos are also almost about that size. So they, you know, they filled in really quickly. Um, and you can see in the second picture with my daughter sitting, this was at Easter, um, there's just hundreds of mimosa flowers throughout the yard. So it's great, um, you know, it's nice when we don't mow it. it, it fills in and is really pretty, but you know, there's a whole mix of things in that grass. So over time we do need to, to get in there to be able to push the mower through there. So it's still quite a bit of, of yard to mow. Um, and we have an above ground pool um, that is kind of on its last leg. So we are actually going to be putting in a pool. So within this um, big giant grassy area, we're going to be putting in a lap pool. And so we're going to be not moving any of the um, perimeter plants around. So we basically planted about, you know, 15 feet around the entire perimeter of the backyard. And we kind of just let the mimosa go crazy. Um, and so we'll be, you know, putting the pool in right off of the deck. And so we're going to be doing more work. I'm sure it's going to be a mess. It's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> but um, all the time we're spending at home these days really made us want to get a pool. She's a swimmer. She loves to swim more than anything. So um, we are going to do it. And so it's going to be crazy. But uh, but over time, I'll be planting more mimosa. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll have a smaller area of a yard to maintain is the plan. Um, so this is just a, a peek from um, the side of the house, just to show you kind of what we've done. So we took more coquina rock, we went back to the mine and we got some more. Um, we created a, a path running along the east side of the house. Um, and along our deck, um, we planted um, some shrubs as well. So we've, I don't know if this is happening in your neighborhood, but in it, in hours, all of these single story homes are being knocked down and everything, these giant homes are being put in place. So we've been trying to really plant the perimeter so we still have privacy in our yard. Um, and so we had planted some blollies just right off of the um, wood deck there. And those, um, we probably planted those, I wanna say about four years ago, maybe. So they'll grow really quickly, super tough. They grow right in the dunes and they have pretty hot pink fruits all over them. Um, and we also planted uh, a red tip cocoa plum as well. So that makes a really nice screen for our porch here. Um, we have an outside shower there. And so we wanted, you know, some privacy from next door. Luckily, the people next door did not. Um, they redid the house, but they did not go up another story. So we were grateful about that. But I also wanted to create this as a fun space for my daughter. So we have an outdoor chalkboard that's kind of um, attached to the fence there. So she spends a lot of time just playing and kind of hiding on this little path that we made out front. Um, we had gotten a clump of um, Everglades palm, which is kind of what is in the center. Um, and it, it typically grows in wetter conditions, but these are doing really well and we're not watering them. It seems like with our the amount of rainfall that we're getting, they're doing great. So those are probably... I want to say only about two or three years old. So we got a decent clump of them to start with, but they're they're filling out really nicely. That was when we thought, oh boy, there's going to be a house right there staring at us. Um, <laughs> next to the yeah, next to the Everglades palm, we have a tea bush, and this is probably the newest thing that I've planted in the yard, and it is one of my favorites. Oh, it's great. It is just constantly covered in little tiny pink flowers, and the pollinators. Are on it every day. Every day I go out there. There's a ton of activity. So it's it's what got a really pretty. One? It's called a so a tea bush is is um. I could look it up for you um, and, or, or kind of send an email to you. So it's, it's typically found, or a pyramid bush is another name for it. I don't know the scientific name off the top of my head. It's found a little bit further south in South Florida. Um, Native Butterfly Flowers is, uh, had it and told me about it. And it's, um, it's really drought tolerant and it's just an amazing pollinator attractor and it only it doesn't get you know very large it's um it's that's probably about as large as it's going to get so it gets to be about i would say eight feet eight to ten feet tall and about just as wide um and it grew it grew quickly and it's just it's great it's one of my favorites i use it a lot more in um my designs now because i know about it and how well it's done so my yeah. yard has been a test yard 
for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. um, and next to that, we have a base seater, which will get much taller. Um, so those two things, we kind of filled in that one um, space in between a little bit more recently. Um, and those get lots of flowers and they're also um, tough and a, and a host plant for butterflies. Um, we have a pigeon plum next to that, which is finally really starting to go. It was kind of slow going at first. It wasn't doing too much. And now it's kind of must have hit the water table and it's just growing rapidly. So that'll grow nice and tall and provide fruits and flowers um, for pollinators and for birds. Um, there's a key thatch palm underneath of our swing. We have a swing that my husband has hung from the tree. So my daughter, we have a little he calls it the sky swing. So she plays up there and right underneath of it is our, our thatch palm. Um, and then our majestic sea grape that gives us a lot of um, the most shade that we have in the yard. Um, and it's just filled in really quickly. He's just, you know, shaped it over the years. Um, so it's got, a, you know, a center stalk and it's kind of splitting off. Um, and I'll show you a couple more up close pictures of that in a sec. Um, this is just a few more photos just of that side path that we have. Um, it's very shady and protected, um, so the beauty berry is, is happy there. Um, and we also have a false indigo in there as well, and a, um, some full size fakahatchies. And there's a little uh, caper that started to sprout on its own, so we're going to let it keep growing there as well. So this is just. Um, our back fence line, we have Kuntis and um, Stokes Asters and Sea Grapes, Fiddlewoods, Gumbo Limbos, and a Ninja Warrior course now that's going from tree to tree. So the trees are big enough. She's been climbing them for a while, but the trees are big enough now that she's we can, we can uh, it's high enough off the ground. We can attach this. And she literally spends almost all of her time out here. She loved it. So we got it for her birthday this August. And um, it's been like our, you know, she loves being in the yard, but this, she just can't get enough of this. So she's either climbing a tree or, you know, climbing on this and she loves it. So um, those trees, you know, have become part of, you know, her playtime, which is great. The more time she spends outside, the better. Um, and you can see our uh, golden rod is just going bananas in our corner. So we still have our lemon tree back there. It's still giving us tons of lemons. It's just surrounded by um, some golden rod. And there's a fire bush too that's just starting to go <laughs> in the background. And it hasn't gotten filled out too, too much yet. I, said, I think I want to say that's about two years old. So we're still, you know, kind of filling in spaces and, uh, and just trying to increase the diversity as much as we can in all of these spots um, to just try to, you know, provide the most benefit for um, our wildlife that we can. Um, this is just- so, And also for the children, you're showing oh, a great oh, way wow. that they can get out there in the yard and enjoy. Yeah, for sure. And it's great that she can spend, I mean, she's spending a lot of time just even in the tree. So it, it's shady, it's cooler, you know, she's picking sea grapes, she's eating them and, um, and she's she's loving it. It's wonderful. So this is just our kind of our working side of our yard. So we have two sheds on this side. Um, and so we create a little path to get to one of the sheds. And then we just have um, some capers that we planted. I want to say it's probably been about four years now. Um, so they're, you know, a lot smaller and they grow, you know, a little bit slowly at, at first. Um, and so these are going to be a, a great screen for this fence and for our neighbor um, to the west, and they just have amazing flowers. Um, so hopefully you can see some of the flowers on the on the picture on the right hand side. And um, they're just really tough, and they you know they don't get too big either. So this side also you can see all of our power and cable and everything comes in from this side. So I didn't want to plant anything that was going to get too big. So we planted capers, and then in the center that's a, a cinnamon bark tree as well. And that's probably we planted all three about the same time. So that is filling in. And this year was the first year we got. Um, flowers and fruit on it. And it was, it was pretty, it gets, you know, they're, it's not very um, dramatic, but they're really beautiful up close when you look at them. Cinnamon bark. I yeah. love that name. I'm yeah, not sure I know what that is. Yeah. I got Maple Street had it. It's not, it's not a common one and it's a small tree. It grows kind of like a column, um, but doesn't get too tall. So I figured it would be great um, to put there. So yeah, I think it, and it's doing really well. 
And this is just a few of the, you know, kind of busier areas in our yard. So, of course, my, my daughter, she's got a little playhouse. She climbs up on top of it and climbs into the tree and swings <laughs> off. Um, all her friends do, too. It's great. They're always up um, in that tree. Um, and then, yeah, there's our bigger shed. And then we have just a patio area where I have a few potted plants. So um, that's a Florida thatch palm in a pot. So if you don't have a big yard, it doesn't mean you can't have things in pots um, and they do really well a lot of our smaller palms and it kind of frames the space nicely so we have a um, we had to actually dig up um, our backyard for plumbing issues so right where underneath on the other side of that patio my husband's like you can't plant anything there you can't and I'm like really because it needs something and it was driving me crazy <laughs> and he was right so our whole sewer of line everything runs right through there so I was so glad I didn't have to really dig anything up but instead what I did was I put it in a pot and it, and it kind of is a plant there instead so there's always options you can always kind of think your way around things and uh, and figure it out. But our native palms can be, you know, as long as, they, yeah, obviously cabbage palm wouldn't work, but thatch palms and silver palms and um, silver thatch would work in, in pots. No problem. So if you have an apartment or anything like that, you can, you can still incorporate natives. Um, and so I'm going to switch it over from my yard. So this is where we are now. So, you know, maybe in another three years, I'll be ready to show you the backyard again. Um, hopefully uh, it'll, it'll maybe happen sooner than that. It's but wonderful it's kind of how you can really see it in action, you know, and see the development and that that's the best way. And yeah, it's using it and it's just beautiful things emerge. So it, it's a great job. Yeah, it's got to function for what you need it to function to. So just always, you know, think about that. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be, it'll be interesting. I haven't had anybody, you know, working in my yard ever. So this is going to be, it's going to be a little hard for me, but it'll be, it'll be worth it over time. So, um, so as we were doing all of this and we actually have an, a, a small nursery on the other side of our shed that kind of runs from that lamppost back. And so we're always digging up plants and, and, um, propagating them and um, giving them to people or using them in projects. It's a really small area, so we don't have a lot of stuff, but, or if, you know, I buy plants um, and I don't need them for a project yet, we'll have them stationed over there. So they're getting water regularly. Um, and, you know, we've, have a wonderful street that we live on and a lot of people were interested in native plants and um, Bev and Joe are on our street. So this is third Avenue in Melbourne beach. So you can do a drive by and see some native yards. Cause there's a bunch of us together now on our block, which is awesome. Um, and our neighbors, a few houses down were, they had gotten a design for maple street and they really wanted to do it, but were having a hard time finding anybody to take it on. And, you know, at the time we're both, you know, we're, we're still, we're still working full-time jobs, other jobs. Um, but they were, pleading with us to help them um and so we said okay enough enough all right we'll help you so this is the gardeners um and this was i want to say it was five or six years ago everything's running together these days um and they had a design and i expanded it um and so it was a front yard and and backyard design so they had kind of just really patchy grass out front and a few things planted. So they had the big oak tree and they had like a wild coffee, but um, they didn't have too much else. And so we expanded the bed, and, you know, we kind of tried to bring it out to where, uh, it, as far as they were comfortable bringing it, they still wanted some grass out front for extra parking and things like that. And they wanted paths going um, across the front bed and then around the side of the house and to the backyard and all the way around the backyard. So um, this was, you know, it was a big project, but um, my husband and myself, and then he also, you know, has access to teachers who also, um, you know, are always looking for work <laughs> and to make extra money. Um, anybody who works for Brevard County knows, you know, it's not for the money. Um, and so it's nice to be able to kind of supplement a little bit when you need to. Um, and so we have access to teachers who are, who are great to help us do these projects. And then some former students as well that come out and help us um, do these installations. So, um, so yeah, so we expanded the beds, we put in paths, we put in some edging. Um, and we, I want to say we planted about 45 different species of plants in their yard and they are they love it. They tell me and text me 
pictures all the time. It's great of how much they love their yard. Um, and so they've been on the native yard tour before. Um, so some of you might have seen um, their yard in person. Um, so this was just the picture of them with their lagoon friendly lawn sign was just after the installation. And then some of these pictures are a little bit later. Um, so we have cocoa plums and false indigos and um, dwarf akahatchies, kunties. You know, this yard, because of that oak, was a, a lot shadier than our yard to begin with. So we were, we were planting some different species there. Um, so this is the yard a little bit more filled out now. Um, you can see um, on, the, on the side yard as well, there's a, a hedge of myrcene, which is another great coastal small tree that you can use for a hedge or for a screen. Um, there's white indigo berry um, further down the path on the right hand side that also is slow growing, great hedge. Um, we have lots of kunti and stoppers um, in here. Um, the red tip cocoa plum, we just trim it every once in a while and it stays in a nice um, understory plant. There's um, some porter weed growing um, in that front corner. Um, which makes it, you know, a nice dense ground cover. Um, they have some bigger fakahatchies. They had some plumbing, like all these big pipes that were kind of exposed that they wanted to hide. So we, we planted some bigger fakahatchies around them um, and that worked great. Um, and then this is the backyard um, originally. So they had already had this path going along the side of their house where they had this blue rock and these stepping stones. So we just kind of carried that around the whole perimeter of the house and then around the pool. They still wanted to kind of be able to get to the pool from all different parts of the yard. So um, we put a, a small bed kind of just around the pool to kind of frame it. Um, and we used um, crushed shell here too. So the mulch wasn't kind of washing around and washing into the pool at all. Um, and we have um, some muleys and uh, a keys thatch palm there, a double one, um, some spider lilies, um, some Adam's needle, dune sunflower, um, goldenrod. Let's see. Um, there's fiddlewoods and necklace pods. And basically the whole perimeter was planted and is, is filling in beautifully. So um, you can see that, you know, the path just curves all the way around the back. They still have um, kind of an island of grass in the center where we've planted um, sunshine mimosa and a few other native ground covers that have kind of filled in. Um, but, you know, nothing has gone, gone too crazy. It's, it, it takes a little bit of time for the sunshine mimosa to kind of fill in and take over. So that's still happening. And they're also using that area to plant some um, fruit trees as well. So they wanted to keep a spot um, for that. Uh, but now, you know, we've installed a fire pit area off the back as well. So they have a place to sit out back and have a fire. And then they installed, um, a, a, you know, a little, um, not an arbor, but um, a, not a pavilion either. What's wrong with me? It's a, come on, Carol, help me. <laughs> I think you're right, a pavilion or something. I, a, there's another word. I, can't, I can't think of it. But it's a great little seating area and it's covered. Mm -hmm. Starts with a P. Pergola. It's a pergola. Yeah, pergola. I'm sorry. I don't know <laughs> but I would love a pergola in my backyard. So maybe the next time I show you pictures of that, I'll have a pergola where those chairs were and the pool. But um, so, yeah, so they've really, you know, kind of framed the space. We, you know, planted things to hide the pool pump and, and stuff like that. So those are just some of the things you want to think about when if you're thinking of your own yard and where you should start and what you want to do. Think about the things you don't want to see and think about the things you do want to see. You want to be able to, you know, see through your windows out into your yard, but you want to, you know, have something beautiful there that's attractive, that's going to, you know, attract different pollinators and things that you get to watch and see. Um, and so, yeah, so this was our first shard. And we didn't do all of this in one shot, but we did it um, over the past three years. So we did a lot. We planted the whole fence line in the back at first. Um, and then uh, and the front yard and we brought the path around, but we've kind of added um, to it over the years. And um, yeah, you know, there wasn't really a lot of landscapers doing any of these kind of projects and that at the time that we did this. And it was also when the big fish kill happened. That's kind of what prompted us to be like, OK, there's, it seems like there's a need really for um, 
this business to be in our community. Um, and so we wanted to be a resource for people because, um, you know, there aren't many other landscapers that have any idea about natives, what to use, where to put them, you know, how to maintain them or anything like that. So that's how the business started. So um, we've been busy ever since. We're, we're as busy as we can be because we're both still, you know, working um, full time and we have a daughter. So it's a balancing act, but we make it happen uh, and we make it work. And so I do a lot of, you know, consults for people, a lot of designs. And then depending on um, what what the people want you know to do we can install it they can install it we can do part of it you can do it in pieces um it's really up to the homeowner it's you know it's just i'm there to assist you and guide you um and so you know what we usually do for most yards that i visit um unless the homeowner has a really clear idea of what they want which isn't typical um we create a design um, and so this is a, a computer based program. And so everything is to scale. I use, a, you know, either a survey or a Google Earth image and um, we lay everything out um, and it, it'll show you, um, you know, full size, how big to expect these plants to get. And so you got to, you can kind of have a really good idea of how many plants you need and what is going to fit where without having to do a lot of trimming and maintenance on them. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of a, you know, what a, a, a typical design would have. It would have a key with a different species and a symbol that would match up with that um, within the design. And then I, a lot of times people aren't, you know, they might be a little bit knowledgeable about the plants, but then I also try to provide pictures of the plants so they have an idea of what they would be getting installed. And this is just going to be kind of um, a quick rundown of a few different projects. Um, and they're different. It's, it's really kind of catered towards, you know, the site and the desires of the homeowners. Um, and so this home was, um, it's just south of the O'Galley Causeway and it got wrecked in Matthew. They had a ton of erosion and damage to their seawall and their property kind of in general. And so, um, they knew that the few things that did well and were kind of holding on, especially on the backside of their seawall were native. And so they it got them more interested um, in native plants. And she's become, she buys more native plants than anybody that I know now. So she's an addict. Um, every time I come to her property, she's got more plants that she's bought, which is wonderful. It's awesome. She's great. Um, and so You have yeah. them addicted nicely. <laughs> yeah, so one day she's, I think she wants to be on the yard one, the yard tour one day too, so we'll see. Um, so she, you know, had a lot of just really patchy dying grass, a lot of areas that had been exposed to a lot of salt spray. And so um, we didn't, you know, the prep wasn't horrible. Um, they had had work done all behind their seawall. So I kind of had this nice, actually fresh area of just sand to work with. So you can see even in that first picture on the left hand side, there's a mulched area and there's plants planted there. So the first thing we did was plant about 250 feet of shoreline um, with Spartina Paytons and Muleys and Spartina Bakeri, Seoxy Daisy and um, some Goldenrod and some dune sunflower as well. And you'll see that in the next couple of pictures. And then we kind of tackled the rest of the, um, the house. So we had late, she wanted pass from her back porch wrapping around both sides of her home. And then we expanded her beds in her front yard um, a lot. And we took up a lot of grass there too. So this is what we were starting with. You can kind of see our spray painted lines there um, where we were gonna run the paths and kind of frame the beds. Um, so this was probably, I want to say three years after, um, maybe two to three. And so we used a pea gravel um, for the path to be able to walk on. So you can walk on it without shoes on. It feels soft and kind of comfy. Um, and we kind of kept the coquina thing going that she had on her back porch that edges um, all of the beds and the paths as well. Um, so you can see all the muleys are blooming, all of the dune sunflower is, is filling in and going crazy. We planted a lot of sunshine and mimosa in there as well, which is starting to take over, but the dune sunflower kind of um, is nice because it's spread so fast that they kind of, it's a nice combination to do because if you plant mimosa right away and think it's going to do a lot, it's, it's not going to. Um, and so planting both at the same time will kind of, um, get a lot of ground cover for you. And then over time, the mimosa will come in and fill in as well. 
Um, so yeah, there's lots of goldenrod in here, black eyed Susan, all different um, wildflowers, some dwarf Bacahatchies, because she's got these beautiful oaks as well. Um, and hey, but this, uh, Nicole, what is yeah. that taller purple? I knew you were going to ask me, and I'm, I'm forgetting <laughs> that one now too. So it grows really, really tall, right on the backside of the dunes, and I, it begins with an. It's Florida paintbrush. Yeah. Oh, paintbrush. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. I didn't know if it was frostweed or no, not frostweed. It would no. Been. Yeah. So it's um, it gets really okay. tall and kind of leggy. So this one um, and 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 then it completely dies back and then it'll and then it'll pop up again. So it's an annual. Um, yeah. Oh, I see, and it recedes itself. Yeah, and it'll just recede itself. Oh, yeah. what a beautiful purple yeah, color. it's really pretty. It's, it, you know, it's not super long lasting, but it's, it's great. And it stands out, you know, because it, it's, it's upright and taller. Thank you for that question, Julia. Um, so this is just kind of looking to the north. So there's sea oxide daisy and dune sunflower, and then this whole swath of um, Spartina patens that you're seeing. So the Spartina patens is a natural, um, grass that you would find either in our marshes a little bit higher up not it doesn't want its feet to be wet it can go really dry um, so you'll also find it on the beach side so um, at like Pelican Park and Satellite Beach they have a lot of it in their coastal strand habitat we have it a lot at the Barrier Island Center as well um, and it, the, it grows like a meadow and so the roots are really interconnected and it, it's amazing for um, for erosion. And so it works wonderful on the backside of um, a seawall. And it's going to really hold the soil in place. And it only gets about two feet tall. So you're not going to lose your view at all. It grows in really densely and, and, and thick. And so I don't really have to do um, that much weeding in this area because it's just it's just sprouted and filled in everywhere um, and we did plant you know several row, rows you know somewhat you know tight together in order to get that kind of effect um, and then on the backs on behind those we planted muleys and then we planted some other flowering um, ground covers in front of that so this is like a nice long stretch um, along her whole property line and a great learning tool of what's right up against the lagoon and yeah. keeping that shoreline in place. Yeah. So instead of, you know, we see, I see it everywhere. It's just a mowed wall of St. Augustine grass um, right to the lagoon mm -hmm. that needs to be watered, fertilized, and, and the clippings blow in there as well. So this it solves all of those issues um, and, and helps provide, um, you know, protection for erosion, which um, we know that we get. Um, and if it's, you know, we got very lucky this year, um, but we're not always that lucky. So, and this actually, she had a clump of the patents um, was the only thing that survived and that part of her seawall did a lot better. And so she knew that that's what she wanted here because sometimes I recommend it for people and they're not really sure about it. Um, and I kind of, you know, have to convince them, but it's, it's a beautiful meadow that you can have wildflowers in and it's really a pretty look. It just kind of blows in the breeze and um, you'd never have to mow it, but it's green. So it's nice. And this is just the front of her property as well. So you, there's beds running all the way on both sides of the driveway down to the house um, that we've created. And then we actually, um, she, she's got lagoon on her other side of the driveway too. This property is pretty big on a slope that's shaded. And we just, um, kind of pulled out all of the weeds in there and are, are starting to plant that, um, that slope and swale too. So this is kind of a, a never ending project, <laughs> um, which is great. And she's planting so many different natives in here as well. Um, but she had a good base. Um, and so there's, um, white indigo berry in here. There's pineland lantana. There's lots of kunti. There's the, uh, the, the dwarf holly she's used in here is kind of like a small hedge. Um, and then also the dwarf, dwarf walters um, viburnum as well. And then we planted lots of capers and beauty berries and uh, red tip cocoa plum. But we're finding here because it's so windy, things they think might do well because, you know, she's on the river, not the ocean, but it's still so windy. Um, we're starting to do some screening hedges to kind of bring the wind down so we can plant um, some of the other things that she wants to plant um, on the other side of them. So just kind of like a windbreak um, that just like farmers used to plant to further crops. And what are, oh, I see. So it's a plant. 
that's yeah, so you, it's basically like a hedge. So you can use privet, you can use um, myrcene, you can use cocoa plums, you can use capers. So it's basically just a hedgerow. So like on a lot of, unfortunately in Florida, they used to use um, Australian pine trees. Yeah. And so you see them planted in a, like in a line for a lot of these farms. And so it was a windbreak for the farms and then the crops wouldn't get damaged inside in the interior. Of, uh, yeah. And so you can do that on your properties too. If you're having a lot of wind, you just got to, you know, plant something that is very wind resistant. That's going to get to a certain size to reduce that wind. And then you can plant things that aren't so tough on the interior of them. But our, our North wind and our East wind are usually our strongest. So those are the sides that you got to watch out for. That's a great lesson with all the lagoon and the yeah, the wind and there taught me, she's taught me a lot. That yard has taught me a lot. So the wind and you're like, this is beautiful, it's gonna be great here. Oh, and then the wind gets it and you're like, Oh my goodness, that wind, it's gotten me again. So you gotta try to mitigate it if you can, or you gotta switch to something else. So yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, so this was another yard on the lagoon as well. And this was a new house. So all of this landscaping was, you know, fairly new. Um, but it was a sea of grass and this was zoysia grass. So this was a little bit harder to get up. Um, it invades the beds. It's got a deeper root than St. Augustine. St. Augustine is the easiest to get rid of um, by far. So, and she had all of these um, stepping stones kind of like laid out in the grass that were hard to walk on. She's older. So she felt like she was, it was dangerous. Um, and so she was like, I don't want any grass in the back at, at all. So, um, and we did some work in the front as well. But um, but we removed yeah all of the grass, expanded all of the beds, and planted a, a diverse array of um, natives here. So this is is the after, the kind of just after. So all the grass is gone. The beds are much larger. We used um, like a mini gravel um, marble in between all the stepping stones, um, and we edged everything so things weren't kind of running into one another. She had, which was nice, was this coquina. I don't know if it might have been part of the permitting that they had to do. I'm not even sure because I haven't seen many properties like this where she had this coquina kind of um, ledge there, like running along her whole seawall where it wasn't grass. So that was nice that she didn't have um, the St. Augustine or any other kind of grass running right up to it. Uh, but she was tired of, you know, the zoysia grass takes a lot of the chemicals more than um, some of the other grasses for pest resistance and, and for a lot of pests. So she was like, I'm done doing that. And we took it all out and we planted um, a lot of stuff. So I'll show you the next picture because the plants here are little. So the plants are little and sometimes, you know, once you get done planting, you're like, wow, is that going to be enough? Like, what is this going to look like? But over time, they're going to fill in. So you just got to be patient. Um, and so this is the is the one main bed um, closest to the lagoon. And so there's yellow top in the background has just gone crazy. And it's just constant yellow flowers that are beautiful for tons of bees and other pollinators. Um, there's some verbena kind of in the front, the closest to the path there is spreading all over the place. The muleys are starting to fill out and get bigger. Um, so there's some kuntis and pineland lantanas a little bit further in. Um, that are also doing really well. And then there's some um, Bahama Cassia here on the right hand side that is just amazing. It looks great. It's just constant yellow flowers. There's, uh, you know, bees and um, birds all over the yard now. She just loves sitting in her backyard and, and watching um, the water and um, all the activity. And knowing that, you know, nothing that she is doing is, is, making its way into the lagoon, even though, you know, everybody's yard is connected to the Indian River Lagoon, you know, all the runoff from everybody's pavement, driveways, yards makes its way into the, into the lagoon. Um, if you live on the east side of 95, but these homeowners that are directly on the lagoon too can have a really big impact because there's hardly any time for any of that to kind of be dissolved or diluted before it gets there. So. So this is another yard that was, um, this is also on the lagoon, except this is the front yard. They're on the back side of the lagoon. So this was just a little bit different. So I'm just kind of try, trying to cover a few different um, landscaping designs that we've done and different things that people have wanted. Um, so they had a septic system in their front yard. So we were like, oh boy, <laughs> they didn't live there all the time. They didn't even know where it was. They were, had just, you know, they probably had it for like two or three years. They use it as a vacation house. And I was like, 
oh my goodness, well, we got to figure out where it is and we need to, you know, only really plant ground covers that aren't going to have deep roots because we didn't want, you know, to impact their system at all. Um, and so they were like, okay, you know, they have no idea <laughs> what they wanted. They just knew they wanted it to be more lagoon friendly and environmentally friendly. And they didn't know anything really about natives. So, um, so we took up all the grass and that was a lot of work. And then we took up all the concrete edging around the islands, which was, I didn't even realize we would have to do some of these jobs. My husband wants to kill me <laughs> because <laughs> all surprises and you're like, oh my God, oh no. <laughs> He doesn't yeah. have to go to the gym anymore. This way he no. can just go. <laughs> no, but it's always, every yard is learning experience. So we were, yeah, so we had a, you know, we wanted to expand the bed. So we didn't want to leave the concrete edging there. So we're like, oh, we can just take it out. I just, it looked like it was just not one solid piece, but they had concreted bags underneath of it. So it was kind of a mess. Um so we dug up all the grass and you can see my hose again laid out in the front. They wanted a lot of extra parking um, because they had people coming and visiting and staying with them. Um, and they wanted it to be all rock and shell. So I've, we've never done a yard like this. Normally, you know, I really kind of advise them against it just because rocks in the beds with the plants can be hot. Um, it doesn't make as good of a cover for as far as uh weeds go and um, it's just not as beneficial for the plants. But um, a lot of people in this neighborhood, this is really far south in Melbourne Beach, have, you know, more of kind of like a Keys kind of look where it's, there's not a lot of mulch and it's all rock. And so that's um, what we did. And so it's very white <laughs> at first. Um, so we have a wave of wash shell that runs along the front for extra parking and then even all the way along back to their gate so they can pull up or, you know, park things or bring kayaks or whatever they need to along that, um, along that Western side. And you can just see, we did not plant a lot of plants and they were very small. And so um, I don't know what they were probably thinking when we got done, but um, this is what, you know, I told her she kept wanting more plants, but I was like, I, you know, I don't, we don't want to do anything, plant too much that's going to impact your um, septic, which is right in the center of the um, of the yard. And you can see there's a potted silver palm that I put in a pot, and that is right over their entrance hatch for their whole septic system. So she wanted something there to cover it, but not plant it on top of it. So I put it in a pot. Um, and we made it work. My husband, they had almost no um, pressure for their irrigation well. So we ran everything with a micro irrigation. And so we were able to use very little water and um, it's not being watered anymore, but the first, you know, about a year and a half, we were irrigating it as much as we needed to. Um, and the bottom picture is, um, I wanna say six months later. So the biggest thing in the photo that you can see are just this little purple verbenas just doing their thing and spreading like crazy. Um, and the muley grasses are getting a little bit bigger. I think they even seem like they're um, starting to seed out a little bit. Um, but you know, we planted really tough coastal stuff again in here because of, um, because of the wind and how open this site is. Um, and so this is the site now. So this has been, I want to say three years. Um, so you can see there's inkberry on either corner. So in both photos, you can see the inkberry. It's kind of, you know, it's an excellent, great, low growing, um, ground cover it only gets to be about maybe thigh high. The muleys have gone crazy. I've never seen muleys go this crazy in my life. I wish these were purple still, but I just took these the other day. I missed my window. Um, but they are so majestic. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, and so, you know, we just planted muleys, inkberry, we planted a, one base seeder and one necklace pod. Um, you can see the necklace pod has um, really grown in and filled in. Um, and then we have some porter weed in the center, um, a pineland lantana, also the biggest pineland lantana I've ever seen. So right on the left-hand side photo behind the palms is the pineland lantana that I was, it must have like a thousand blooms on it every day. I'm, it's, it's crazy. Sometimes I plant them and they don't do as well. This one is like, oh my goodness, it's probably six to eight feet across. Oh my God. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's, and it's not that old and it, and it gets a fair amount of wind there. So I don't know. Some things are just really happy where you, when you, where you put them, but. Um, and that's good that you taught them patience. 
because you know with the plants they do grow and to have a little patience and boy does that look beautiful now yeah, it's great. It was, you know, you know what they needed. So they have a lot of areas. You can see the tire marks and all the shells. So they're parking on that shell constantly. Um, and it's just, it's, it's filled in and um, it just took a little bit of time. And so these ground covers especially are going to fill in pretty quickly. Um, and as long as, you know, they, they, everything needs some irrigation at first. You just can't, even though it's native, you can't just stick it in the ground and expect that it's going to be fine. It's got to establish its roots. Um, and then once it's, you know, once it does, then you're good. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank it does. You. They grow. And I'm so happy they were patient and went, Ooh, is it, is it going to happen? And it yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I think they were just really happy not to have the dying grass in the front yard anymore. And so <laughs> even though it was a lot of rock, you know, they were, they were probably maybe more okay with it. That, yeah. Than, um, than some other people could have been. But yeah, so it was definitely, this was a, a, I've never done a project like this. I never really want to do a project like this again. But um, only because that rock is just, it's very heavy to move. No uh, kidding. It's, oh a labor in it. it's, it's really, it's hard. So, um, but you know, it's, you got to give people what they want. You can't just do whatever you want. They're not going to pay you to do that. So. Right. Well, yeah. you can suggest, hey, we can, you know, you get the, you get that out and then I'll come with the plants, but who knows what. Yeah, so do. sometimes we, sometimes people do crops, so that's good because I think I have one more yard and the people yeah. in this yard have done the prep. So this is in Melbourne, so this is not a coastal site, but this it was a cool project and the family was great. I love working with the families and getting to know people and it's like they become like, you know, part of your life. And so it's, um, it's awesome. I mean, it's a great community that we have of people that are interested in native plants. Um, and, you know, they were on more of a budget. So they were like, Hey, we're going to, we'll do the prep. We're strong. We're able. And I was like, you go for it. Cause it's the part that I hate the most. <laughs> <laughs> and they said so they took out all the grass, but that's what their grass looked like before. It was not good. Um, they were in an HOA too. So they were like having problems. Um, they were not, you know, the HOA was not happy. Um, and so they took out all of the grass um, for us. So we just had to come in and plant and mulch. Um, and so this um, is the house after. So they painted it first. So um, they were like, let us get it painted before you guys come in. And so it definitely it looks different and it's the same house. It's just been painted blue instead. Um, and so this is probably, I want to say six months after we planted. Um, so I didn't have any real initial photos, but it's filling in really well and it's beautiful and diverse and great and they love it. So we have a lot of Kuntis, Muleys, Dwarf Akahatchis. We have um, three, the three species of stopper in the yard that I planted um, near the house and then along their fence line. Um, so we have Spanish stopper and white stopper and Simpson stopper. Um, there's some Walters by Burnham here too. We used as a screen that has filled in. Um, there is some lakeside uh, sunflower that I thought was Stokes Aster that I planted <laughs> that was so beautiful. I was like, this was like the best mistake I've ever made. Um, <laughs> it's so happy there. <laughs> I was like, what is this? The leaf looked different to me. They look, I kind of have a similar leaf, I guess. And um, they are so pretty there too. I've never used it before and it, it's pretty dry, but it's in the shade. So it seemed to have done really well. And Stokes um, Aster is uh, the purple plant though, isn't it? Yeah, Stokes Aster is the purple, which I love. And then the lakeside sunflower is yellow so there was no flowers on it when i bought it okay. but the, the drabiness of the leaves looked similar and i just grabbed them and uh so surprise sometimes she gets surprised <laughs> happy surprise it, it's yeah. all good with native plants yeah. though <laughs> yeah, well um in the second photo you can see um kind of closer to the windows there is um horseman that has just gone bananas and so it's um just beautiful purple flowers all through in here. There's some coastal love grass that grows lower, that's closer to their front door. Um, we have some um, St. Andrew's Cross over here in the front corner um, and Coreopsis, you know, and beauty berries, false indigos, the two taller ones near the um, windows um, on that first picture are false indigos. And they're, you know, it's more protected in this in this uh, neighborhood, um, further from the ocean, and um, their firebush and their beauty berries have really filled out and are doing great. 
Um, so we, we actually, you know, a lot of times we get um, called in and we'll do the front yard and then they'll call us back and we'll do the backyard too. Or sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes we'll do the back and then we'll do the front. Um, and so we did some more work in their, in their backyard as well, but that was just installed. So I don't have any, any pictures of that, but, um, but yeah, this is just, you know, really filling in nicely now. And our neighbors were staring at me. Like I was like, <laughs> what, are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing to my neighborhood? They were like, why are you using uh, ground cloth underneath all of that? I'm like, you don't want to do that. Like everyone needs to stop doing that in mulched areas. Like it's just all the roots are going to grow into it. It's going to be a problem over time. And if you're mulching and planting things that are going to fill out, you don't need it. You know, it's going to, you're going to have some weeds at first, but it really isn't um, too much. And, you know, in any of these yards, cause we do some maintenance for people, you know, I come through depending on the, on how big the property is, you know, every, you know, if it's a really big property, you know, once a week. So I'm able to hit all the different areas and spend enough time. But usually at my house, you know, I walk through, every two weeks and just check and see what I need to pull. Um, and that's all that it takes, maybe, you know, a half an hour to an hour. And instead of pushing a lawnmower and, um, you know, doing all the other work that, it, you know, a monoculture takes, it's, 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 it's really not, you know, something that is, you know, too much for people to be able to take on. I find sometimes too, when I go out to my yard and I go, oh, I need to pull some weeds. I just really enjoy going out to the yard and then I pull some weeds, you know, and then yeah, it's like, I mean, it, it's not that bad. look at everything and see what's going on, you know, see how, you know, check on your plants, see if, you know, if there's any critters on them, like what, you know, are there caterpillars? Are there bees? Like what's going on? Yeah. It's a great, it's a great, especially, you know, this time of year, it's not always as fun in August. That's usually when I get involved. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Help me. I haven't been able to get in the yard. I need to oh my God, boy. I know. Yeah, I know. So it, it does get warm. Um, yes, but, uh, you know, plants grow and we can't forget that. And, um, it just, gosh, this one looks just gorgeous. I bet they really enjoy. How did the homeowners association, what did they Oh, think? I got one more picture. I'm sorry. This is the front of the Ooh, house. So, good. um, yeah. So the only thing that was there was there, they had two, um, what are, I'm forgetting what they're called now. Dang it. The trees that are right here, they're planted everywhere, but they have no, you know, Wildlife. Crate myrtles. There's two crate myrtles. So those are just the two trees that are there. So everything else is native though. Um, and they were dead. And and because they started irrigating for the new plantings, they kind of flush back out and are doing better. Um, and they're sprouting up everywhere. I never realized how much crate myrtles will actually kind of spread. Um, but they are. So I've been, we've, they've been having to like pull some out of different places. But the main reason I wanted to show this picture is just this front patch of grass. Um, is actually frog fruit. And so this was, Ooh. you know, just like not even six months after we planted it is 100% coverage and looks great. They don't mow it. They have to, you know, just hand weed it occasionally. And it just filled in so quickly and they were really happy with it. And so this is just a nice, great alternative to, to grass um, that you can utilize if you live in an HOA or somewhere where you have more restrictions, or even if you're the kind of person that, you know, you're like, oh, I can't just get rid of all of my grass. I want to have part of my yard still look, um, have this type of look to it. You can use those instead. Um, and I just, I didn't want to use mimosa. It, there was enough sun, but I just knew I was, I wouldn't get the coverage fast enough. So, you know, you could plant both. Um, in there as well, if you wanted to, it's up to you, but, um, but this worked really well and worked really quickly. So I was really happy with it. So that's why I wanted to include this one. Yeah, that's great. Cause it has the sidewalk and the road. So it's already got the barriers and yeah, yeah, we didn't and edge this middle. at all. Yeah. It was because, you know, they took it, if you're, if you're going to take it down along, um, you know, a sidewalk, you know, and, and remove all of your grass, you either have to dig the edge out a little bit so you're able to mulch it or um, or use edging. You, you kind of need to do one or the other. But um, but here we used it like a, in the um, frog fruit area, we used a finer mulch too. So instead of the big bark, we used just a, a smaller bark. And so it was able to kind of spread and grow like really quickly through there. You could use pine straw too. We do have a question about the frog fruit is um, it says, do you seed frog fruit? 
or so plant seedlings? I planted seedlings here. And so we planted, we probably planted about, I would say, like a good amount of them, but they're inexpensive. So we planted probably about like 70 of them in this in this space. So a you couple rows. Like a four inch container? Yeah, and a four inch, inch cup. Okay. Yeah, four inch okay. size. Yeah, is plenty. Um, and you can, you know, it'll grow um, from cuttings, I think. And so a lot of times people have it growing in their yards. And so you can kind of take pieces and, and, and transplant it. And so um, it's, you know, people see it in their yards and they think it's a weed because they only want St. Augustine grass in their yards, but <laughs> it's happy here and it's a host plant and it's, it likes it shady and likes it sunny and, you know, it can go moist or dry. It's really versatile. So it's, it's, it's an excellent ground cover. It is, it is. And you pick one and you see all those little tiny flowers around yeah. that purple center. It's so, oh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So the homeowner association had no problem. No, we're good. Exactly. They've never got any um, complaints. And I don't, you know, I haven't got a chance to talk to the neighbors about it again, but I, would, I, I wish that I could um, just be, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely funny. She was just like, no landscape cloth. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Um, awesome. Yeah. So if, I don't know if anybody else has any questions, but we have um, a Facebook page, which I don't update enough. They don't have enough time really, but, and also <laughs> our website, um, but you can always, uh, yeah, if you go to go native landscaping um, at iCloud, uh, dot com that is or go native landscaping.com it's just our website and then native landscaping at iCloud is our email address so if you have questions you can always reach out to me um, if you have native plant questions just in general you can always find me at the barrier island center as well i'm always happy to talk to people about incorporating natives into their yards um, and it's something, you know, we can't preserve everything. And so, um, and we don't have the money to preserve a lot left, you know, within Brevard County. So we need to start to bring that biodiversity into our yards in order to be able to keep, you know, our wildlife populations going. Yeah, I hands down agree. And when they come there to the Barrier Island Sanctuary, they can observe that landscaping and see all those butterflies and this time of year warblers and stuff that's over there. Oh yeah, there's so many migratory birds moving through. Oh, it's yeah. Great. Yeah. So yeah, come see the center. We are open um, except for Mondays, um, our normal hours. Not all of our exhibits are up and running, but um, but our trails are and they're starting to dry out. They were really muddy there for a little bit, but they're starting to dry out. So, um, you know, I would just wear sneakers though, because it's going to, there'll probably be some wet spots. Um, and yeah, and you can see the projects that we've done around the building and, you know, on your way home, you can drive down third Avenue and see, you know, there's several. So I want to say there's four or five, I think five yards now just on our block that are native. So it's, it's spreading, which is great. That's that what we need to great. You know what? We do have a couple of questions. Okay. You, know, you know, we were really, and I agree with, um, let's see, who asked this one? Uh, Julie asked it, and I, that tea bush. Now, where did you find it? And are it, was it Maple Street natives? So Maple Street did not have it. It was native butterfly flowers had it. Okay. So yeah. that's Tim and Anna. Tim and Anna had it, yeah. And just so everybody else knows, you can find their access on our web, on our newsletter. Um, and they're going to be speakers, gosh, towards the end of next year, I think in May. But um, yeah, just some very unique plants. Um, yeah, they're go yeah, they're getting stuff from all different parts of the state. So they have stuff that I've, that, you know, I'm not familiar with because it's not something that's found, you know, directly here in our region. So I'm still learning stuff too well i think you had mentioned that it's mostly from south florida but of course we're yeah. tending to agree that there's the global warming so oh definitely we're even seeing birds and stuff up here that what you know we never had seen you know 10 years ago definitely yeah and the cinnamon bark yes i got that from maple street yeah so that and i had gotten that a few years ago so they um that is a great one. And another one that, you know, it was funny because I tried to plant it and I don't know what happened. It didn't make it, but um, is a Bahama strong bark is one of the most beautiful 
smaller shrubs you can plant as well. They're just hard to get. Um, and I had done, I moved it and said, and that was probably part of the problem, but they are bloom and have beautiful fruit on them. And um, Trevor has one in his yard. That's why I know about it. And occasionally Maple Street has them as well. And they're beautiful. So yeah, so that's a great one. But yeah, the tea bush, I had you know, never seen anywhere else before. And it's, it's one of my favorite things in my yard now. Yeah, I bet. Um, where is Brock's Solid uh, located? So Brock's Solid Rock is in Cocoa. Oh, it's in Cocoa. Yes, and it's kind of like northern Cocoa. So, um, yeah, it's an active quarry. And so you can go get big rocks. You can get little rocks. Um, they Mostly don't fall ahead of time before you yeah, go. So I would just all, you know, and then all they're going to do is just kind of uh, show you where to go, where the pile is, um, and then they'll just weigh you on the way out. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there's I'll no other way to do wait not, before I get there. Yeah. It's not like a full service kind of place. <laughs> it's a mine. So if you're on your own, pretty much, but they'll show you where to get it and then they'll weigh you on the way out, and it's really reasonable. Um, the prices. So, like, if you went to Landscape Depot, it's I forget how much it is a pound, but it's like ten times as much. Hmm. And you know, your yard, how you learned how to do it and get all that ready, and then have your neighbors do it. And I know Bev and uh, Joe are on your street as well. Yeah, they're amazing. Their yard is yeah, is Theirs amazing. Is crazy as well. Um, would you mind giving out your yard, uh, just the street name? Is it okay? Yeah, so we're on Third Avenue, and my yard is three o three, and then the uh, and then the gardener's yard is three eleven, and then from there, so um, Bev and Joe live next to um, the gardeners. So from okay. there, almost to the end of the block, is all natives. So starts at my. I didn't know their last name was Gardner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jason and Serena Gardner, they're wonderful. They've done a lot of great things for the lagoon. They helped to sponsor a lot of projects that we did at Rickman Park because they own C-Deck. So they own that business in Rockledge. So they're they're wonderful support, supporters of the lagoon um, and yeah, and native and native plants. Yeah, we loved to have them on the tour once too. They're a yeah. very friendly bunch too. So, yeah, um, they're great. Yeah, and we would go native wouldn't be here without them. So <laughs> that's neat, though. That's yeah. neat. It was a community effort, and a lot of that is um, just in case others don't know that we're talking a lot of herb planting, and they pointed out the one that was mainland, but a lot of these definitely have all been beachside, and so that's the wind and this. Yeah, so we get a lot there. of. Yeah, from peach, people beachside, it's a little bit easier for us sometimes too. You know, if I get a call and, you know, it's further out in, um, you know, Southwest Palm Bay, I, it just might be too much time for us to kind of take take it on. So I'll pass it to, you know, to other people, Tim and Anna or, or somebody else, just because I, it's, it's hard for me to get out to do consults, you know, That's while like I'm working. And, and so it's like, oh, or if someone calls me from Titusville or from different places, I just can't, I can't work it into my schedule all the time. So, it, I mean, it, it depends, but um, sometimes, you know, I don't get further away from the beach just because I, you know, I don't have enough time to um, be able to take on projects that are so far from home. But Rudd County is so huge. We get people calling and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to take me, you know, an hour and 15 minutes just to get to your house. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think I would be almost, you know, 45 minutes from your house because I'm yeah. in West Palm Bay and right. you're out there. So, yeah. Um, and that's why there's two, chapters of native plant right. science we've yeah. seen it up by the enchanted forest so um, yeah excellent excellent well you know we really appreciate it love the feedback uh, a lot of people asking questions and they were great a lot of compliments coming your way uh oh, thank very you. nice presentation pictures are great we love the before and afters we had a lot of good comments too on here nicole um, great so we really appreciate it yeah, I'm so glad I found those old photos. I couldn't believe it. I was like, no way. Because, <laughs> you know, if you don't see the before, you can't really appreciate the after. So it does help. So if you're if you're starting any projects, take some pictures, you yes. know, before. That's capture the before. Yeah. That is so true. Because I just moved here a couple of years ago. And I thought, oh, and even somebody uh, 
Catherine reminded me to take those pictures first. And I did. And I come across them and I'm like, holy mackerel, look at yeah. that. There's nothing there. Now it does. I love the way it gets more lush and more yeah. flies and stuff like that, too. So, um, well, thank you again. Thank You're you welcome. So My pleasure. Hopefully, you know, one of these times we'll all get together in person. And, you know, I know this is normally your wreath making event. So, you know, it's, it was always one of the, the best meetings of the year. So, um, but I'm, I'm so glad you guys could figure it out and still have a way for us to share and communicate and even share with more people who get to watch this um, yeah. from places that are further away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody um, remembers to go to our website and uh, come to uh, our meeting in January 11th on 2010, 2010, 2021, uh, and about another highlighting of Robin uh, Polinski about uh, landscaping in effects to the Indian River Lagoon. And one other thing, if you would please consider getting a native plant and planting that in your yard for your New Year's resolution. So we want to thank you all for coming by today and um, happy holidays and plant native. Happy holidays. Stay safe, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye.